Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Section 4.2, talking about the introduction to regression. So what we've talked about in the 4.1 was we're looking at the relationship between two variables, and we look at that, for the first way to look at that relationship between two quantitative variables is to graph a scatter plot on the x-axis and the y-axis. We look at that relationship and then we compute the correlation coefficient lowercase r, and that gives us an idea of the strength of that correlation, how closely associated linearly, or in other words, how closely the data values fit to a line. Remember, the stronger to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the relationship, whether it be positive or negative, and the closer to 0, the weaker the relationship. So another thing that we're going to do once we have the scatter plot up is think about what this line that fits to the data, what the equation of that line would be, and then we're going to use that equation to, com to compute predictions and regressions. So we don't, the big part of statistics is making predictions, so this is going to be a big part of what we're going to do in this section. So this regression line, sometimes called the least squares regression line, or the best fit line, is used to fit data, or fit the scatter plot with a linear uh, representation. Okay, so let's say we have the data of low temps and high temps in certain cities on, say, a given day, and um, we want to see the relationship between those two variables. So x would be the low temp and y would be the high temp. We put up the scatter plot and notice that we have a looks to be a fairly strong positive correlation. We could go put the data into our calculators, which I'll show in the next video, and we can come up with this prediction line, okay, and we call it y hat. So in this case, y hat would equal 0.9 times x plus 20. So 0.9 is the slope, and 20 is the y-intercept, and we're going to interpret those here soon. But this date, this line fits the data so that so that it best approximates the data. And it doesn't necessarily have to go through any of the data values, but or the scatter plot values, but it's a good line to use for predictions. So maybe if we want to know the what the high temp would be in a place in Alaska, we could look up the low temp there of say negative 10, and that would tell us the, maybe an accurate high temp. Or if we wanted to know uh, what the if the low temp was 65 or 70 somewhere off this picture, we can predict a high temp for that as well. So the equation of the least squares regression line, this is the formula and all that stuff, but it's still basically the slope times x plus the y-intercept, okay? And we're going to compute this. Don't worry about these formulas. We're going to compute this using the linreg function in our calculator under stat calculate, which I'll show you in another video. So y hat, sorry, y hat here is called the prediction value of y. All right, now... Let's just go to this whole picture, okay? So let's say we have the scatter plot up and we've sketched our uh, line, our best fit line, which we calculated in our calculator. We have to be able to interpret what this line means. So for instance, so I'm going to talk about the slope first, even though they're mentioning, or sorry, I'm going to talk about the y-intercept first, even though they're mentioning the slope first. So the y-intercept is terminated as the estimated value of y when x equals zero. So what this 20 right here is saying, what I'm explaining here, is we would predict a high temperature of 20 when the low temperature was equal to 0. In that case, this makes sense. Not every y-intercept makes sense. It, uh, in certain things, when we compare the relationship between two variables, it doesn't even make sense that the x variable would equal 0. But in this case, x equaling 0 means a low temp of 0 degrees. And when there is a low temp of 0 degrees, that corresponds to a predicted high temp of 20. Now remember, this is a prediction line. It's not an actual data value where we've looked up a low temp somewhere in the United States. So we predict a high temp of 20 when the low temp is 0. Then the slope, this 0.9. Now, the, formally it says we can interpret the slope of the regression line as the estimated change in y per unit increase in x. What they mean by per unit is by per one unit increase. 
So what this means, this 0.9 means, remember for any slope you can turn it into a fraction by putting it over 1. So that 0.9 over 1 means as the low temp goes up 1, the high temp goes up about 0.9 degrees. And as the low temp goes up 1 again, the high temp goes up 0.9 degrees. This is just rise over run. So we run 1, we run 1, and go up 0.9. So that's what they mean by per unit increase. All right. And then the other thing that we can always uh, count on is that the slope of the correlation, or sorry, the slope of the best fit line, if it's positive, then the correlation coefficient will be positive. And if the slope of the best fit line is negative, then we can expect the correlation coefficient to be negative. So they'll have that relationship, but they do not have the same value. Very important to remember. Okay. So now we get to the point where we have the line. And then we want to make some predictions and, and look at the residual of that prediction. So let's say that um, we have a uh, prediction here where we want to know what the high temp would be uh, if the low temp was 50 degrees. All right, And we actually have two different cities here where, where we can look at the residual. So let's say uh, you say, oh, well, you know, I want to know what the prediction the predicted high temp for a low of 50 degrees is. All we have to do is plug that in for the value of x, because remember we're predicting for y, y hat, that's the predictor. All right, so you plug in x, plug in the value of 50 for x, showing that here, 0 0.9 times 50 plus 20, do the math and you get 65, and that's showing that the predicted, this black dot right here, the predicted um, high temp for a low temp of 50 degrees is 65. Now notice, so that would be our prediction, 65. That's the black dot. However, notice that Dallas had a low temp of 50, and because it's lined up right here at 50, but its actual high was 70 degrees, 70 degrees, which is five above the predicted. So to do a residual, and I'll give you this formula in class and on your formula sheet, it's always the observed value from the actual data value, which was 70, the observed y minus the predicted y. 70 minus 65 is 5. So what that's saying here is that our, uh, our actual observed value is 5 above the prediction line. And we can do this, we can do a residual for any of these data values. So this data value, the, the residual will be positive. This data value, the residual will be negative because the data value is below the mean. This looks to be about a residual of about negative 8 or so here. And this looks to be about the same residual. If you look back, how do we know that that, den or that Dallas temp was 70? Well, if you look at it, notice that Dallas has the low temp of 50 that we were computing before. And you can get from the table its observed high temperature of 70. Notice that Memphis has a high temperature of 64 when it's low as 50. So let me go back. The residual for Memphis, since their observed temperature is 64, would be 64 minus the 65 and negative 1 residual, meaning that Memphis, Memphis's actual high temperature was 1 below the predicted high temperature. So don't, uh, I know I'm not showing you the formula on this, on this uh, sheet, or sorry, on this slide, but I will give you the formula for any residual. It's the observed value minus the predicted, and you find the observed values from the table. To get a predicted value, you plug it in, you plug in the x value into the equation to get your predicted y value. So once again, just summarizing predictions and residuals, if the error is positive, that means that the data value is above the regression line. That happened right here. Dallas is above the regression line, five units above, so the prediction error was positive. If the, if the prediction error is negative, then the data value lows, lies below the mean, which is like Memphis. Memphis Memphis's residual was negative one, meaning that its observed high temp was one below the predicted high temp for 50 degrees. And if the prediction error equals zero, that means that the data value lies directly on the regression line. That could be a case right here where this point is directly on the regression line. So uh, the, the, the residual is zero. 
So you'll be able, so you'll be expected to come up with the equation of the regression line using uh, technology, using our calculator. Then you'll have to manually plug in to find a prediction and also a residual. One final thing that I wanted to mention with uh, regression, you know, before you go ahead and start doing linear regression, you got to make sure, first of all, that you don't have any big outliers in your data set. Notice if we move this data value, this last one up here, all the way down to here, this is what they're trying to show, this upper data value, if it was all the way down here, look at how much the residual, sorry, the best fit line would change. And it's a drastically different picture. So you need to make sure that you don't have any outliers or data values that are just way off from the rest of the data. Otherwise, your least squares regression line or best fit line could be an inaccurate uh, measure of prediction. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you're not trying to do a linear regression for things that don't fit linearly like this. Okay, so that could be a, a problem as well. So going over again, remember we got to come up with the equation of the best fit line, use it to plug in an x value to come up with a prediction, and then from there, compute a residual, which is the observed y value from the table minus the predicted value.